Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary and or SIPRAP for the day of 439 for the 28th of April. And uh, so uh, this there is a change in term of uh, the in term of the programming. Uh, the summary now now will only be exclusive to uh, uh, DPA sergeants, officers and generals. Uh, basically uh, people who actually pay a subscription either on Patreon, Coffee, or Locals. Uh, this, this actually have a, 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 a reason behind it because uh, the, U the YouTube has been uh, penalizing uh, the DPA for no reason. So they, they keep claiming some in uh, invalid activities. And invalid activities tends to be relating to mid-video mid adver advertisements. And I have been trying to figure out how to solve this problem. I have been reducing uh, the number of ads uh, in the middle of the videos. Uh, however, it doesn't seem to be uh, solving the problem. Um, the like it, it got worse and worse. Uh, the num the amount of demon demonetization and uh, uh, it got very bad. Uh, this uh, this past month, the April, uh, like almost is more than a third of the income uh, the revenue has disappeared uh, on top of what i have already been like doing a bit a bit lesser sip rep because i was very busy so the income on the past month is horrible and and it, it I, I cannot go on uh, in this way so so and and then if you notice you know some of these other channels that is report uh also reporting on the war they are you know doing very well and and they and short videos especially seems to be doing really well uh, on youtube and short videos don't have meet, meet uh, video ads so uh so i have to change the strategy so i will be breaking up the entire sit rep uh, on the youtube into just focusing on a uh, specific fronts and then the full sit rep will only be available to uh, paying subscribers basically the dpa army uh, ncos officers and uh, generals so this this is a necessary change and uh because this is uh and of, of course this because this is not on youtube uh in the sense of like you know that's why i i'm able to chit chat with you here uh if not no on youtube uh i tend to have to go very fast uh because it doesn't uh, uh it doesn't do well you know when when people chit chat uh on uh on youtube uh, yeah that's just how you that's how it is youtube is a doesn't doesn't work really well uh, when uh when uh you get very relaxed and somehow you no know, I have just have to know I just have to keep adapting you no know, the the channel should have gotten hundred thousand subs uh actually by end of December last year uh unfortunately from June last year uh we started the channel started to get suppressed and it was suppressed very very badly that's almost no reach i cannot get new subscribers because it doesn't push me to new viewers the channel was stagnant for a long time the growth is very very hard and so until now you no know, the in terms of revenue in terms of viewership there's no difference between now not much difference between now and uh, and nine months ago so it's it's quite uh depressing uh so there is all these changes need to be done so i have to do experiments and this is one of them uh, so i hope you understand and uh, for those that you are already part of the dpa army uh, you're a sergeant at least uh five dollars five us dollars a month uh yeah you'll, you'll be seeing this and uh, hopefully um yeah hopefully this works out and uh it, it makes your money uh, more worth it and uh so you know at least there's something for the dpa sergeants uh, because only the officers get the map right so get the access to this map so yeah so this is just something that i'm trying to do and yeah so hopefully hopefully this works out uh, in a way that uh, i can get more people to become part of the dpa army become sergeants officers and uh hopefully this also you know because of the change in the way how the content is being done uh, because it's shorter uh more bite-sized uh, more people will be willing to subscribe to the channel and uh, there will be more views more growth then uh, with the higher viewership with more income then uh, dpa can do more so this is the entire strategy so it's because uh, you guys are the people who really supports me 
with your own money and uh, your hard-earned money and that's why i'm uh i'm telling you all these things so you are really part of the dpa army so i'm very very thankful uh for your help and uh so not uh no further ado let's go to the summary so this is the day 429 for the 28th of april and uh, let's start off with uh information coming from riba so they quoted the defense minister the Oleksiy uh, Rezne reznikov saying that the country is ready to launch a counter-offensive the troops are just waiting for the decision of the command very very big words so i'm so this is a uh, kind of like you know very weird because uh his deputy says that uh, they are already doing the counter-offensive then now he said they are ready to do a counter-offensive so my opinion is it's already started uh it's just that uh it's still in the phase one uh they are still doing recon they are positioning the troops positioning the surface to air missiles and the surface to air missiles that they position are all getting destroyed uh so um as they move into position once they got spotted they got hit by artillery or suicide drones and this is actually evidenced uh by the number of uh, multiple numbers of uh, videos that came out over the past 24 to 48 hours of you no know, lancet drones uh hitting s 300s hitting uh the good part uh aa guns and it's horrid a number of these guns is actually at this position at uh, promin village uh where a number of these uh videos came out from so this is actually in the Mikolaev region uh it is actually a bit of distance is around 20 20 to 30 kilometers 30 kilometers from the russian position it pretty much more or less more or less a division uh, uh i mean the distance is needed because they, they they cannot be too far away so if you talk about s300 s300 uh by the number 300 you know that it's actually 300 in range even if it's a patriot missile is 150 they can actually be a lot more behind but the problem is now because the russians are using the glide bombs the glide bombs can be launched from 90 kilometers away or 70 kilometers away and and for that 70 kilometers from the target so add on from for from plus this 30 is actually 100 kilometers so it's actually a bit far already so they and and then the window of the aeroplane flying into range to the to target acquisition to firing the missile and you need the time for the missile to actually reach the plane so the the surface to air missiles cannot be too far back in the rear which is why they are moving quite near to the front within range of uh these drones the drone range if i'm not wrong is 40 kilometers uh the landsat drones so when they go into within 30 kilometers uh that's actually within the landsat drones uh range which is why they got hit so this is a uh, quite uh quite depressing for the ukrainians because they are caught in between you know a a, a, a rock and a hard place you know I, i'm not sure how to say that word uh. so that's the situation that they are facing so uh moving on to, uh, uh in the in crimea uh the the ukrainians launched a massive drone strike and uh despite a uh, multiple shot down shootdowns of the drones uh, some of these drones still made it through and they actually hit the oil depot causing a big fire at the facility uh the fire area is about a thousand square meters so as sevastopol the drone strike finally succeeded and um and then we go move on to the zaporizhia line and the zaporizhia line the U ukrainian forces actually tried to uh try to uh do a probing over at mafopil and uh so the so the in uh the map is from, from as far as my understanding goes it's actually under russian control so they're actually trying to you know move in maybe probe probe the line or maybe this could be offensive uh but it did not work and uh otherwise generally the line is just full of bombardment that is bombarding over at a uh, sheriffney at um malinivka as well as at Novopil. and uh moving on uh we go into uh the donates front at the donates front so we have uh shelling reported at perplifka uh, according to the russian defense ministry uh there is shelling reported at vodian uh as well uh this vodian uh in further in the rear so this is also where uh, the ukrainians actually do their form ups uh the they they do their uh form ups or forces around here and they could actually go from here to do some kind of offensive into uh, another direction uh, rather than going to the voleda you know, going south if they go south the pro the problem is uh there is a lot of uh, russian troops around mikilsky as well as at uh, palivka 
I mean, it is possible because they do want to capture uh this these two uh positions because uh this will provide a good uh buffer zone for uh, Voleda. And uh, moving on, to, uh, uh Marinka, the this stupid place still continue to be fight uh being fought over. Uh, it just cannot end somehow. And um. Uh, and there is also fighting reporter at Novo Mihailivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, no details, so no idea where exactly the fighting is. And oh, we are now into the uh, the FK front. At the, at the FK front, uh, we have fighting reporter at Povomaisky, Zhevene, as well as at uh, at the FK. Uh, we do not have any information about uh, this fighting around uh, this area here. Uh, the because it's coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, sometimes we. This could just be artillery shelling, so not too sure what exactly happens. And uh, moving on, uh, there's nothing in the New York front into the Bakhmut front. At the Bakhmut front, the Russians uh, launched massive shelling into the rear positions. They're shelling reported at Pratashny, uh, Mikolaivka, uh, Ivanivsky, Chasivya, and as well as uh, at uh, Bodanivka. So the there's fighting reported towards Chasivia according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, so maybe it is actually trying to head to this road here. Uh, because Chasivia, no, I'm not exactly sure how they actually draw Chasivia. No, maybe it's this big. So if this is Chasivia, then you no know, fighting towards this direction. Uh, this area here could be also Chasifia. And um, there is fighting. Re so we go into the Bakhmut itself. There is some changes to the front line uh, in, in Bakhmut. So um, if you look at the, the difference in terms of the front line, you can see that the, the Ukrainian uh, lines has uh, have become no more like this now. Yeah, because the Russian forces have captured uh, more regions. So. The information, uh, particularly, we are talking about uh, uh, fighting now along the Chakovskogo Street, uh, as well. Uh, this also Chakos, uh, also Chakovskogo Street. Uh, the the Russian forces captured the the, the medical college, the Bamu Medical College over uh, over at this region here, and uh, so as a result, I also saw pro Russian sources uh, showing that uh, the the entire line here is actually now all under Russian control. And uh, Surya maps actually reported that the Gurash area has been fully captured by the Russian forces, which means that uh, this entire area is now under Russian control as well, leaving only this building here. And then uh, all that's left uh, is actually the citadel. So the, the entire high-rise neighborhood is the main last stand for the Ukrainians. Not talking about the, the further up north around uh, all these lower lower buildings on top. Uh, the Ukrainians before losing the garage area actually tried to launch a counter attack according to Ryber, but it seems like this counter attack did not work out. Uh, which is why uh, Surat Maps uh, information seems to be not the more updated one. The Ukrainians actually attack, failed, and then the Russians uh, take over. So there is, and then uh, the in the northern part. Uh, of this uh Bakhmut city fronts uh in the battle of Bakhmut uh fighting is now along Oborodny street as well as at Porimogi street uh, this is actually a resumption of the offensive that has been uh paused in this uh, front line here previous pre the focus was previously all around uh, this area here so now the Russians are now pushing in the north again and are pushing in this direction so yeah so this is how it looks like now and uh there is fighting reported at the Kromove, according to this UA and Raiba. Uh, the fighting is still in the northern part of Kromove. And uh, and then uh, there is fighting reported at Bodanivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And that's all from the Kupians, uh, sorry, at the Bakhmut front. Uh, moving into the Sivas front, uh, there is still fighting reported at Bilohorivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, not much details in that. And uh, moving into the Crimea front, we have... Uh, Fighting really in the Serebransky forest tree as well uh, as in the southern part of the Prova, according to uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, Deep State U, uh, the the one at Serebransky forest tree is by Deep State UA, and uh, sh the Russian Defense Ministry reported shelling at the Prova, as well as at Terny. Uh, 
And then we have information from Raiba that the Russians are conducting a positional uh, offensive in the area of uh, Zuraka, Zuravka Gule, which is actually this valley region over here. And uh, there is, and also at Nekievka. So, uh, so there is some uh, limited push uh, within this direction. And uh, that's all from the Crimea front. So this is the Crimea front. Moving up north into the Svetove Kupians front. At the Svetove front, uh, we have uh, Ukrainians uh, attacking at Novoselivsky, uh, according to the Zaba group of forces and uh, in the latest uh, West group of forces, I think it's also Zaba group of forces. Uh, they again reported that the Ukrainians are attacking uh, uh, in this area here. So in, either in the north or in the south, uh, definitely not towards the east. Uh, because Kuzemivka is over there and uh, there is also uh, probing or attacks at uh, Berestove further up north uh, there is shelling reported at Kramalne at Tabaivka according to the Russian Defense Ministry Ukrainians attack at Kaislivka uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry as well everything is a Russian Defense Ministry anyway and uh, and then uh, at Tinkovka the Russian def uh, reported shelling over here at Sinkivka, again, the Ukrainians are reported to be attacking on both days, 28, and the latest information from today, 29. And then uh, there's fighting also reported at Masitivka, uh, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry's uh, Zapad Group of Forces press center. And then uh, there is shelling reported at Voreshna. So, so this is the... Uh, I think there's also a helicopter, yeah. So uh, there's a Ukrainian mi -H helicopter shot down over Drobyshev. Mi-8 is a transport helicopter and uh, the this transport helicopter can also used to be uh, used to shoot uh, rockets, uh, rocket ports. And uh, that's all from the summary for the day of uh, 429 for the 28th of April. And uh, so do let me know in the comments if there is comments uh, section, uh, maybe in the locals or in Patreon. I'm not sure if I want to put this on coffee maybe i will put it on coffee but uh let me know what you think of the situation about you know this setup uh this arrangement in terms of the content yeah this i i i, I just try my best uh because if uh, there is no sufficient revenue then i cannot continue uh which will be a huge disappointment to everyone as well uh, not just to myself as well i think to everyone that have been supporting me so i have to make this work somehow so anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next update